time's important. Time, it's all about time. You know, and the, and the people that understand that are the ones that make money. Your messenger board will be your crew. Who's riding that day? And sometimes, like th with bigger companies, you can have a long board and a short board. And where you get a whole bunch of guys. It's like, you know, you have, maybe you have 20 guys that are riding that day. So you can't be sending them ping pong 20 guys around the city. So what you do is you take the slower dogs and you keep them downtown. You let these guys do the short deliveries all day. They're a little money. And then take the gravy dogs, the guys that really like to ride a bicycle. You know what I mean? You know, that are out there for the exercise and the thrill of it and just going more distance than, you know, than they did yesterday in that city. And then you hand them the long tags. The long tags, are, they go now into different zones when you're doing a long delivery. So the zone prices get higher and that's where the bigger companies make their money because they'll ping pong you around all day downtown for $3.50. But try and go out to the avenues, they're going to charge you $24. And you're, now that you've been a while there, a while at that company, and you're on the longboard because that's what it takes experience to get on the longboard. No new jacks come out there and don't like to ride a lot, you know what I mean? Very few, you know. And then they don't last because they used to riding on the side of the road forever. You know, and you get downtown in traffic and this guy can't be a downtown guy anyway. Get hot is moving at a very fast amount of speed for a bike. These are the guys that are in your mind as a dispatcher, and you're thinking about them all the time, and that's how they get all the gravy. David I wouldn't necessarily say that like there'd be a preference. Like I'd say everybody gets like equal wealth as long as they're like willing to call on it. Dispatch does have a way of like you know she has people that she likes, but she treats everybody accordingly. She treats everybody pretty cool. I'd, you know, tell her mellow. Well, not mellow. She gets like you know she has to work on the board too. Like we're all part of the team. And, like there's differences, but overall we're pretty like we're pretty strong team together. You don't want to diss your dispatcher ever. You know? He's the man that is your bread and butter guy. He hands you all your deliveries all day long. If you get in tight with him, and I'm not saying it's ethical and all, but you know, you get in tight with him, sometimes you get the best stuff. If everybody else goes up to get a delivery, he can be handing you a rush delivery. You know, a nice close one because he knows you're close by. Even though it's that next guy's turn to go, he'll be tightening you right up. Even if you don't check in, the dispatcher knows where you're going, he knows how fast you're going, he knows where you're going to be. Hey, where are you? Are you at 4th and Market? Yeah, I'm going by 4th and Market right now. Great, go in there. I got a package for you right there. That's the system I'm on. It's, on, it's called Free Call. Just to get a job. But uh, it's a pretty cool system. I mean, because you get to pick, like, what you want to do. I mean, some tags do kind of belong to certain people because, like, that's, like, their area, like, their zone. But overall, if you're willing to do it, then, and you can do it logistically. So, um, it's yours to do. You know, if, if you gotta build up a route. So, I know. Many different ways to get paid as a messenger. Generally in this city, it's it's on a commission basis. The larger companies, they'll pay you as low as 46, 45 percent of that delivery, the total cost of that delivery that they're billing the client. Um, now I've seen companies that pay high as 60 percent, you know, which is you're doing way better than the guy who's operating the company. It seems like, but. Only if you're getting a company that has high rates. Maybe you get a company that has, has low rates and you're doing 50 deliveries a day, which is a shitload of work. And 
you know, you're only making three hundred twenty-five dollars a week in chat. It's just, it's not right because their 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 rates are so low. What are you gonna make a dollar ten for fifty deliveries? Come on, you're making no money. You know, it could be difficult. My job is to deliver packages, pick and deliver packages. Yeah, when you gotta get smoking, that means you gotta be somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, if somebody says, man, I gotta get smoking, dude, and I'll be looking at them like you're still here. Dude, if you gotta be smoking, you got to get, dude, you know? And that's the go for a slug, dude, you know what I'm saying? Slug is the same way. Somebody that's moving hella slow, you know? Get out the way, slug, or get hot, slug. Happy Friday. This for you. And let's see, where are you? Oh yeah. Number 12, please. Number 16 is your spot. A signature and print on 13. Signature and the print. Thank you. Thank you. Back in the early 80s, I tried it for the first time. And I got hit, you know what I'm saying? And it was a scary experience, so I didn't do it for a while. And then I tried it again, maybe like six years later, and I wound up chipping a bone in my ankle, which I couldn't do it. And then a few years later, I decided to come back out here again and try it, and this time it stuck. And that was five years ago. Best thing about messaging, man, is just to being out here free, dude. You know what I'm saying? To do what the fuck I want. There's nobody hounding me down my neck except for one person on the radio, dude. The people that do messages and work with me are cool too, you know, it's like a, it's like its own little community like. <laughs> people stepping off the sidewalk. Buses trying to push you over, but cab drivers trying to open the door on you. Okay, I've seen many people cut me off in their vehicles, and sometimes it's not out of stupidity or nativity. It's just that, you know, screw this guy. He's on a bicycle. He's a messenger, man. He spits on cars or whatever. The, the radical dudes usually that don't hang out long enough and have respect have given the other guys that do hang out long enough a bad rapport with the community because they're the first ones that get all think it's cool to get aggro and yank out your lock and bust out somebody's side view mirror. You know, it's because he pulled a move in front of you. And you realize, he didn't do any harm. You didn't come within like 18 inch of a, inches of his car, you know? And that's kind of like, that's my personal limit. You're cutting me off, and in no way that I can come within 18 inches of your car safely, then you fucked up, brother. I'm gonna get mad. You know, but that's, that's pretty fair, man. I'm trying to flow, it's a flow thing. That's about all I need. Not much space, I'm good to go. Crowd. It's not like I'm going to pile anybody, but I'm looking for the gaps. You know, there's always gaps. You can have other people walking across the street, and there's going to be a gap somewhere in between those people. You know, and if there ain't, we'll fucking stop. But usually, more often than not, you're like, oh, all right, I spot it, and I'm going to be like, eh. and you follow them. As they're walking, you're following with your bike, going, okay, I got to make sure I'm going to hit that gap. And it's like, You're watching the relationship of two moving objects and the spaces between them opening and closing, you know, like, oh, there's my hole and I'm going through it. And I've come to intersections. It's been so close that I don't know how I'm still here talking about it. And then when you get through it, it's like the adrenaline is pumped so far that you're screaming at nobody saying, you can't kill me, man. <laughs> you can't. So close. 
time you're dipping through a little eyes closed and closed in. Imagine two buses are passing you. You ain't got no brakes, you know what I'm saying? You gotta look through the dips up ahead. It's all becomes this big video game of moving objects. You know, you're just watching this one catch up to this one and you see your holes before they're there. You're riding into a hole, it's not there. And when you get there, it's there. And you gotta always be riding ahead of where you are. You know, you're like you're in your mind. I'm right here, but in my mind, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna be doing up there because if I'm thinking about what I'm, where I am right now, it's already too late. It's already happened. I'm gonna get hit. In this city, in four years, riding, I've been hit 12 times. A couple of them put me in the hospital. Uh, a year and a half ago, a guy dragged me out of the street down on Townsend Street, sat with me on the curb for 20 minutes, and I got up and rode away. I had like eight, after I went to the hospital, 18 stitches here. The whole side of my face is grated off my chin, two inside my mouth. Uh, 17 down here, in fact, my hands were all ripped up. I just hit a pothole and wasn't looking. Fell right off the bike and impacted my face about 20 miles an hour into the street. He had a bad day today. That's a, like you show me that's a fucking fuck. understatement. He was cruising you know and some lady just hit him from behind. That bitch ran a red light. She didn't just hit me, dude. Imagine you're just riding. There's no way you can stop. Someone hits you from behind. You just get tossed. You know, it's not like a cozy bike where you can just like coast. You just get tossed. It's hard for You ride too hard. Man, I don't even want to talk about it, dude. Yeah, look at you smiling. What's up, Ice-T? Oh, I've been through it What's too up, many times to explain exactly what happened, dude. It's bent wheel, Taco Bell. Wheels are to look like tacos. They're not supposed to look like tacos. That's business, man. That's bad. But uh, I healed up pretty well, I guess. It was a little rugged. And the funny thing is I saw this guy in a bar. He came up to me. He's like, oh, you look so much better. I couldn't believe you just got up and rode away. And I remember feeling like, I don't know who this guy is. And he saw that on my face that I didn't know who he was. And he said, do you know me? And I said, no. And he was like, I'm the guy that dragged you out of the street the other day. Like, it was only three days before. And uh, he was like, you don't remember me. He said, I gave you my handkerchief. And I remember at the hospital, I had a handkerchief. They tried to give back to me. And I couldn't remember where it came from. And it was this guy. I sat with him on the curb for like 20 minutes. And uh, didn't recognize him three days later. It was brutal. That's a good story, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I busted my left collarbone this one. Yeah. Um, I was up on top of uh, Sacramento, and I was uh, doing a tag, and some guy buzzed me, and I went over to the right really fast, and I clipped a clipped a parked car side view mirror, and went on a flying lesson and failed. But I got to go. This guy Joe Woods used to be a messenger. He's sort of a sort of retired messenger, and uh, he used to work for us a long time ago. And uh, his house got broken into, and he got shot. And uh, generally, when a messenger dies, we have a sort of a wake, and we spend you know usually the following Friday and in uh, South Park where we'll all gather after dark and do a candlelight vigil type of thing. Not really anybody stands up and talks, we just hang out and you know, get some booze and do some 420. Then we would ride down to a pier down by Mission Rock. It's this rickety old pier and we been just going down there for years and toss the guy's bike in, in the bay. Sort of a little messenger style funeral. That was what was going on there riding in a funeral procession and some semi was in a hurry and tried to jump through the line. And uh, words were exchanged, tempers flared. Guy whipped a couple pieces of wood at the uh, cyclist, Chris Robertson, and uh, then ran him over on purpose. Um, you know, but you go like you go to these candlelight vigil things, and you just want to like you, know, you want to, you're partying. I'm 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 not sad that I lost Joe. You know, Joe was a close friend, but uh, you know, 
it's it's inevitable in this industry. You know, I, how many times I felt like I was going to die. You know, people have to die for others to live. It's just part of life, and uh, you know, it really sucks when it happens. It's a total drag, dude. But I've watched a good dozen, 12, 15 people since I've been riding in my ears, just you know, get killed, man. It's it's drag. But then uh, after we'll take our bikes and we'll ride over to the pier over there. We should take a old crappy ass front wheel, pump up the tire on it so it floats. We we'll put flowers and cards in it and you know, throw it in the water, man. Let it float away.